What is your memory today of that last long night in the Oval Office? I had not been to bed for three days at all. But I was trying to put together 12 different nations within which banks existed that held Iranian assets, gold and, and billions of dollars. At the same time, we were trying to deal with the Iranians through the Algerians. So I would speak English, the Algerians spoke French, the Iranians spoke Persian, and so we had very complex letters going back and forth. And we not only had to get the approval 100% of very greedy American bankers who wanted to extract as much financial benefit as they could from the Iranian funds that had been, that had been deposited in their banks, but also all these other foreign banks that were not under my control. And uh, at the same time, we had to negotiate with the Iranians uh, on how the hostages should be released. They made innumerable demands. The Iranian bank was an independent group, and they had to approve at the final stages all the banking arrangements that, that we had made around the rest of the world. So it was extremely complex. And uh, one crisis after another arose, and eventually we were able to get them all resolved so that the, the night before I left the White House as president, uh, we had everything confirmed. The next morning, I knew that the hostages would be released because the Iranians had approved from the political point of view and also from the economic banking side. And, the, and all the hostages were put in an airplane early on the morning of, uh, of Reagan's inauguration day. And I was still in the uh, White House with uh, informal clothes on, Rosen came and told me I had 15 minutes to change into a morning suit because the Reagans were on the way to the White House. As I went up to the reviewing stand, I knew that every hostage was in an airplane on the end of the runway waiting to take off from Tehran Airport. And then President Reagan made his inaugural address when I started back up. No longer president, the Secret Service told me the hostages had cleared airspace and they were on the way home free. And I, I would guess that's probably the, the single happiest moment of my whole life. I went out of office, but my hostages were free and safe. How was your post-presidential recovery period? How much do you remember, and how much has uh, God and nature blanked <laughs> out from those years? I remember it very distinctly. President Reagan, who had refused to be briefed on the hostage crisis, and had refused to be briefed on the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, was gracious enough to say, knowing that the hostages were about to be released, that he wanted me to go over and greet them when they came back to Wiesbaden, Germany. So I went home, got a brief nap, changed clothes, got back on the airplane with my key staff from the White House, and we flew over to uh, Germany to meet the hostages. And that took a good um, 36 hours. So uh, it was a, a wonderful, happy confrontation with uh, hostages who had been suffering then for 444 days. I did not know how they would react to me uh, when I walked in the room where all of them were assembled. And the first one stood up and uh, looked me in the eyes. He threw his arms around me and hugged me, both of us shed tears, and I went around the room and, and spoke to every one of the hostages who expressed their gratitude to me, I would say for my reticence and not launching a military attack that might have cost them their lives. And they had some questions that I answered then. Uh, one question was, why did you ever let the, the Shah come into America? Uh, and so forth, I answered the question. And then uh, I went back and, and some of them were getting haircuts and they they were talking on the telephones. We had telephones for everybody to talk to their loved ones back home. And I interrupted some of the phone calls. And I took the phone and said hello to their wives or mothers and so forth. It was a very wonderful experience. And then we flew back home. And we opened a bottle of champagne, some bottles of champagne for the first time.